Well, let's go ahead and take a look at how things are shaping up in the political race for 2024 on both the Democrat and Republican sides of the aisle. Uh, let's get ready to rumble! You can't handle the truth! Hi, I'm Pastor Marty. This is the Afternoon Drive. Make sure you're a subscriber to the channel. Smack the bell, click the word all to get notification of my rants, and please share these videos and please hit the like. That's what drives up the algorithm so that the videos can get out there and other people can find our channel. Thank you. There is absolutely no doubt that Joe Obama Biden's numbers are, they're in the tank. I mean, the vast majority of Democrats do not want him to run again. You even have Hillary Rodham Clinton came out of retirement this week to basically say that, yes, his age is a concern. Psst, Hillary, Sonny Holstein over at The View isn't going to like you saying that. She thinks that's ageism. No, it's the fact that Joe Biden is, well, suffering from dementia and other cognitive mental issues, and it has nothing to do with his age. Case in point, I am not a Fauci guy on any level. All of you know that. But Fauci's, what, 81? Uh, looks good. Relatively healthy. Sharp. Articulate. He's a liar. He's evil. But he's got his mental faculties in place. And uh, he holds a conversation. And you can actually understand what he's saying. Does Joe Biden give off that vibe at all? Saw an interesting article today that many believe that Vlad Putin would love for Joe Biden to remain as president. Why? Because he's weak and ineffective. Most of the dictatorial leaders of the world would love to see Joe Biden remain as president. Why? Because he's inept. And we certainly know that... Uh, President 11, that would be XI of China, would love to see Biden remain. Why? Because he's already been bought. He's already been bought and paid for. So if he makes his move on Taiwan, he certainly knows that Joe knows his place and to just sit it out and stay out. So as these rogue leaders of the world run roughshod over the United States, including China and Russia combining their economies together to put a hurt on the U.S., Nonetheless, Democrats, by and large, have resolved themselves to the fact that barring his actual death, he's going to be the nominee. I was going to say, even if he suffers from a stroke, he probably wouldn't be. But then again, this is the party that gave us John Fetterman. So, barring his deciding on his own to step out of the way, or his actual death, uh, Joe Biden is going to be the Democratic nominee. So uh, the other two people that have declared are Marianne Williamson and Robert F. Kennedy Jr. Let's begin with Marianne Williamson. Uh, she is as far left as you can go. She's also into crystals and the Wiccan religion and all the metaphysical, and she wants to come across as kind of like this hippie guru grandma who's into new age and the occult. The word is, though, that she's absolutely a nasty individual to be around and to work for. I don't know. I don't really go into those kind of stories. I know for years, conservative media love to talk about what was supposedly going on inside the Clinton White House, you know, Hillary Rodham Clinton losing her cool with Bill, throwing furniture at him, cussing out the Secret Service. I don't know if any of that was true. I didn't get into any of it. I didn't read any of the books about it. Same people that have an appetite for that wanted to know the inside dirt of the dysfunctional Trump White House. You know, Joe Obama, or I'm sorry, Obama himself back in the days when he was in the White House smoking dope in the in the bedroom, just watching ESPN all day. I, I don't know if any of that's true. Don't care. Because none of that can actually ever be corroborated or substantiated. And it's a he said, she said, and I don't care. But 
the fact that Marianne Williamson lost her campaign manager and then her deputy campaign manager in a 24-hour cycle, that's not good. That means her campaign is going nowhere. And again, when she threw her hat in the ring, she had to kind of know she wasn't going anywhere. You're going up against an incumbent. And the way the Democratic Party machine works, uh, once Joe Obama declared, uh, he said he wasn't going to debate. And most of the states for the Democratic Party won't even bother to hold primaries. They will just automatically give their delegates to Joe Biden. So this wasn't going anywhere other than, you know, maybe her campaign staff was hoping to get her on all the, the talk shows and the cable shows and the podcasts and actually have, you know, big viewership, get it out there. Then they could write their books, you know, their their days on the campaign trail with Marianne and how she was trying to trailblaze a new message. Apparently all of that is bust and it's done. The problem with Marianne Williamson, there are other far lefties that have far more audience appeal than she does. AOC is one of them. And I know some of you true far leftists, you can't stand AOC because you now understand her to be the fraud that the rest of us tried to warn you that she was. And you've now, you social Democrats, have woken up to the fact that, yeah, she's she's a bust, she's a fraud. Uh, but nonetheless, she's got a big social media following, and when AOC says something, it gets 150 times more views than anything Marianne Williamson will ever say. Guarantee you, most young lefties don't even know who Marianne Williamson is, and when they do see her, they look at each other kind of like, oh, it's like my grandmother. Yeah, and they blow her off, and that's the end of Marianne Williamson. Robert F. Kennedy Jr., I have no doubt that he is right on so many issues when it comes to what we would call classic liberalism. Uh, he doesn't like this authoritarian uh, style of governance that he sees that his party has welcomed and embraced and endorsed and is using, you know, the weaponization of the FBI against their political enemies, the the restriction of your rights and liberties, in particular in areas of freedom of speech, censoring, platform denial, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And there are certain things that he has had to say about we have to use the phrase jabs, because if you say the other, well, you know, YouTube doesn't like that, um, that I find him to be fascinating and spot on. And he was certainly spot on about Dr. Fauci and the authoritarian power grab that was used during the pandemic and the lockdowns, etc. The problem with RFK is twofold. Number one, the media is going to hammer him on his anti-vax platform. And they're going to constantly just make him out to be an anti-vax loon. That's number one. Number two, uh, I've, I've read about it and I have, forgive me, I have forgotten uh, what the uh, medical diagnosis is with RFK Jr. that uh, affects his speech and speech pattern. The bottom line is this. This presidential race is media driven. You've got to be able to speak well, speak fluently, speak accurately, articulate, and the smoother your delivery, the better you're going to do in the polls. Whether you like that or not, that is the hard, fast fact and reality. And in that area, RFK is not going to be able to pull it off. He might be able to pull it off in a debate with a Joe Biden. Team Biden is never, ever, never, ever going to allow that to happen. So America will never see that debate. And if there's any debates at all during the Democratic primary, I guess it's between Marianne and RFK and no one will watch. If Biden's not there, no one will watch. So uh, it's, it's going to be Biden. On the other side, we have the Republican presidential nomination field filling up. And so let me begin with Vivek Ramaswamy. 
I like a lot of what he has to say. He is bright. He is articulate. He thinks quick on his feet. And he can push back in a polite way with the media and engage them on Meet the Press and uh, Fox News Sunday, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. The problem with Vivek Ramaswamy, he's a no-name. And he has no star power. He has He's going nowhere. He's polling at nowhere, and he's going nowhere. Um, maybe at some point he and Donald Trump cross paths, and uh, a couple of things that Vivek would like to see done can be car become part of the Trump platform. The thing is, though, Donald Trump is seen as the incumbent. This is why he's got like a 40-point spread on the field right now. And that's only going to get stronger. Um, and because he has that 40-point spread on the field right now, it means he is not beholding to anyone to have to listen to their ideas and adapt it into his platform. That's why he has the platform that he has, and it's holding firm. Asa Hutchinson is polling at, well, zero. On what planet? Did somebody think to advise Asa, hey, America is waiting for the former governor of Arkansas to save us? So Asa Hutchinson, zero, not even going to say any more about him. He comes from a state where all roads lead to a mobile home. Nikki Haley, who was ambassador to the United Nations under Donald Trump, did a fairly good job when she held the line on the Trump agenda. But um, let's get real with what Nikki Haley is. She is the trans version of Mitt Romney. Yes, I said it. She is the trans version of Mitt Romney. If Mitt Romney were a woman, he would be Nikki Haley. And she's far better looking than Dylan Mulvaney. Love ya! <laughs> Mitt Romney is nothing more than a rhino, which is a Republican dressed in, I'm sorry, a Democrat dressed in Republican drag. But, uh, you know, Nikki isn't going anywhere either. Larry Elder is in. I just found out about that yesterday. I didn't know he was in. Larry Elder is in. Couldn't make it in California on the gubernatorial uh, bid against Gavin Newsom, the plastic Ken doll. I don't know why he's in other than maybe hoping Donald Trump will pick him for a cabinet position. Don't know. Larry Elder, nice guy, but please, 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 please stay in your lane and running for president, isn't it? Yesterday, Tim Scott threw his hat in the ring. <sighs> Tim, Tim, you're, you're, you've got great ideas. You've got great positions on things. You are a far better asset to what needs to be done staying in the hallowed halls of Congress than making an absolute no chance whatsoever bid for the White House. Now, again, Trump is polling high, and I believe he would be polling even higher if the pollsters weren't factoring in some candidates that are undeclared but listing them as choices, like Chris Christie, who keeps threatening to run. But again, got news for you there, uh, Carvel's Fudgy the Whale. It ain't happening. I know back in your glory days, you were the tough talk and taking on the media when you were the governor of New Jersey. But let's get real. You two are a rhino, and you're only running out of spite because you hate Donald Trump because he didn't give you a cabinet position. You took out Mitt Romney in 2016. I'm sorry. You took out uh, Marco Rubio in 2016. You thought Trump would reward you with a cabinet position, and you got nothing. You got absolutely nothing. And it, this is just a little bit of Jersey vengeance. You know, you still think of yourself as Tony Soprano, and uh, you know what? Go for it. Uh, you're, you're not going to go anywhere, and all you're doing right now is being a drag on what's really happening. Mike Pence, never, 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 ever going to happen. There is no way Team Trump, and I mean Trump supporters, MAGA America, is ever going to vote for uh, Mike Pence. He would have to attract only rhinos and moderate Democrats, and he hasn't got the personality at all to bring over moderate Democrats, and he barely has enough personality to attract a few rhinos. 
Mi I'm sorry, Mike Pence is, he is like the pile of wet grass. When somebody decided to mow in the rain and it leaves the clumpy piles of wet grass everywhere and you just go out and go, that's Mike Pence. And, you know, it's never, never, never going to happen. Oh, son of a bitty bit, uh, son of a bitty bit, son of a bitty bit, a uh, gun. <laughs> you thought I was going to say, uh, son of a Uh, but this is where we cue the angelic choir. Oh, Saint DeSantis. Oh, please. Uh, right now, he is running hard right. He really is. Uh, his... His handlers have got him running much harder right. Trust me. Trust me. I was on the radio in Orlando, Florida, when uh, Ron DeSantis was throwing his hat in the ring to run for governor of Florida the first time. Uh, interviewed Ron DeSantis. And I can tell you, he is not this hardcore and this hard right. And he has not had some epiphany to come this hard right. Um he has done this out of political expedience. He wants to be viewed as the real tough, hard right conservative like Donald Trump without the Trump baggage. The problem is you're getting your fanny kicked by Mickey Mouse. You can deny it. You can try to spin it any way you want. But I'm telling you, the left is going to kill you with you lost 3,000 jobs because of your fight with Mickey Mouse, and there's more to come. And if, by some miracle, you were to get the Republican nomination, you will lose every conservative immediately upon your coronation as the official GOP candidate when you immediately take off the mask and moderate back to the center. Was it Mitt Romney or was it John McCain that talked about etch a sketch that you run hard right in the primary and then you shake it clear and moderate? That's Ron DeSantis. And it won't be the Democrats who will make you pay for that in the general, it'll be the conservatives because we will sit it out. Completely and totally sit it out. And if you were appearing to be any type of real threat to the establishment, Mr. Sanctimonious, they will out you. Whatever they got on you, You've denied, denied, denied that you had anything to do with the torture that took place on Gitmo. Me thinks there's video of that. Me thinks the deep state will show it if you get out of line and ever try to take them on. So that's how I see things right now. But then again, it's still early out. But it looks to be a rematch between Joe Biden... And President Trump, and this time, this time, there is real momentum and the president, former president, Donald Trump's favor, that it should carry him even through shenanigans. Because, you know, we can't say other phrases. Um, there's, there's no doubt in my mind what happened in 2020. But that said, this time around, you have a president that is obviously suffering from dementia and cognitive issues. We're going to be in a recession during the election. And you're going to see a lot of Democrats who are going to go into that booth and they are going to vote Trump. Bump, ba-dump, bump.